Good morning, everybody. Happy Thursday. This is the day the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and we will be exceedingly glad in it because God is good. He is so worthy to be praised. So, hey, find a reason to be happy today or you can find a reason to be sad. It's a decision and it's a decision of quality. And I'm talking about maybe in a terrible situation, emotionally or mentally. But you know what? You got to use your words, man, to dig yourself out of a hole you might be in and realize that you have God and that uh, it's going to be well. So I'm just saying, OK, I'm not uh, insensitive to what people might be going through. I'm just trying to show you how to get out. Open your mouth up set your thermostat whether you've you know you're in the afternoon or in the morning set your thermostat let the devil know you will not have victory over my life today and uh yeah and talk yourself into a good atmosphere talk yourself into a good attitude this is the day that the lord hath made I will rejoice I'm not leaving it up to my feelings about whether or not I'm gonna rejoice I will rejoice and uh, say that, say that out loud. I will rejoice and I will be exceedingly glad in it because God's good. He is good. Welcome to the Grace Gang this morning. Praise the Lord. Set that thermostat with me right now. And uh, Melchizedek said to Abram, he said, uh, I, I'm going to bless you. He said, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to speak and I'm going to declare blessings over you and i'm i'm speaking it right now i'm declaring a blessing over your life today that uh, david also david said i will see i had to believe that i would see the goodness of the lord in the land of the living believe it today might as well believe that you're going to see the goodness of the lord in the land of the living happy birthday to everybody who's got a birthday we welcome those of you from portugal and utah to the Grace Gang this morning. And uh, those of you in Columbus, Ohio, welcome to the Grace Gang this morning. College Park is in the house this morning, along with Savannah, Georgia. And we welcome you guys to the Grace Gang. Blessings upon your life in the name of Jesus, Canada. We welcome you to the Grace Gang this morning. And we declare that all is well with you and your house. Covington, Georgia is in the house this morning. We welcome you to the Grace Gang. All is well in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Good morning and uh, welcome to the Grace Gang. Dayton, Ohio, Bronx, New York, um, Sacramento, California, we welcome you this morning to the Grace Gang, and we declare that all is well with you and your house. London, over in the UK, welcome to the Grace Gang. Nigeria, Montana, Pembroke, welcome to the Grace Gang this morning. World Changes Nation, World Changes Church International, all of our churches, welcome. Those of you in Fayetteville and Dallas, Texas and Galveston, Texas and Omaha, Nebraska. Welcome. Welcome to the Grace Gang this morning. All is well. St. Louis, we welcome you this morning. Tampa Bay, Florida, you are welcome this morning. And I'm telling you, all is well with you and your house. We welcome uh, uh, those of you in Germany this morning. Well, Germany is in the house this morning. Welcome to the Grace Gang this morning. And uh, we declare that you are blessed going in and blessed coming out. You are the head and not the tail. Praise God. New Orleans and Tulsa and Indianapolis. You are welcome to the Grace Gang this morning. And um, we consider it an honor to have you in the house today. And uh, we are thankful to God our mighty King for all that he is in your life today and in mine. Happy Thursday. Praise God. And uh, yeah, we're going to let's let's we're going to get on this thing today. Let's set that thermostat today. 
said it today. Do not be moved by what you feel, uh, what you see today, what you hear today. Nah, not going to do it. If you're in the afternoon, just take authority over whatever might have happened today. And, um, you know, God be blessed with, with, with everything that goes on. New York City, you're in the house today. Louisville, Kentucky, in the house with us today. And uh, I'm just grateful and thankful that God be praised. Amen. Amen. And so let's go ahead and declare Psalms 91 and, um, you know, and, and declare this thing in the name of Jesus. And let's believe God. Amen. Repeat after me. I declare that I will dwell in the shelter of the most high God. I will find rest. In the shadow of the Almighty. God is my refuge and my fortress. You are my God, in whom I trust, and with great confidence, in whom I will rely. God will rescue me from every trap and protect me from every disease. I am covered and protected by his outstretched arms. God's faithful promises are mine. God's faithful promises are my armor and my protection. I will not be afraid of the terrors of the night, nor of the arrows that fly in the day. I will not dread any disease that stalks in the darkness, nor any disaster that strikes at midday. Because God is my refuge and the almighty God of my home, no evil will befall me. No plague can come near my dwelling. God has ordered his angels to guard, defend, and protect me in my house. God's armies of heaven will keep me from falling. I will walk unharmed and kick anything that is evil from my path. Because of God's love for me, I will call upon him. He will set me above all my troubles. He will deliver me from all my fears. And he will honor me with his presence and power. He will reward me with long life. And he will show me his salvation. I declare that I am Psalms 91 equipped. And all is well with me. In Jesus mighty name. And everybody said, amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Well, hey, we've been talking about works that are acceptable to God. And uh, we've been learning some things like we understand that if um, if what you do uh, is not born out of love, love your motivation, uh, it's not going to be accepted by God. Or if you're doing it out of fear, it's not going to be accepted by God. And if it's not done out of volunteerism and joy, it's probably not accepted by God because what happens is doing it any other way will cause it to be dead works. It's dead works because you're trying to do something to deserve something from God. It's almost like you're trying to tip God in order to get him to do something for you, you know? Uh, and so we want to continue that. And, uh, Today, we're going to talk about works that are acceptable to God uh, must be as unto the Lord. So whatever you're doing, you got to ask yourself the question, am I doing this as unto the Lord? See, we got to understand that good works are not only voluntary uh, and joyful, but these good works are motivated by love, but they must be as unto the Lord. So what you do must be as unto the Lord in order for it to be acceptable. Now, I want to share some scriptures with you because Christ died for a particular thing that I want you to see in scripture. If you have your Bible, if not, you can write these down. I want you to look at them. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 15. 
2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 15. Now listen to this, 2 Corinthians 5 verse 15. And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. So it says we're living unto Jesus. We're living unto him. What we do, we're doing it unto him. All right. We should not henceforth live unto ourselves, but we're living unto him. And, and, and I think people need to be reminded of that, that I'm living unto the Lord. But a lot of times we get to thinking of that we're living unto ourselves. OK, now look at First Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 31. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 31. And look at verse 31. He says, whether therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do it all to the glory of God. That's pretty, that's pretty plain. That whatever you do, do it all to the glory of God. And I think you have to ask yourself this question. What I am doing Am I doing it unto the glory of God? Am I doing it unto the glory of God? Is God going to get glory out of this or is it me? Okay. Am I doing this unto myself or am I doing it uh, to the glory of God? And then um, Colossians, if you have your, your scripture there, Colossians chapter three, and this, this really nails it. Colossians chapter three and verse 17 Look what he says here. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So when you when you talk about, you know, you know, you know, not not falling from grace not trying to work to get God to do something for you, or a better way to say it, not trying to do works to try to deserve something from God, okay? that But we're doing everything un, unto the Lord. So Christ died so that these scriptures we just read could be true. He died so all of these things could be true, that we could work unto him, and we do what we do on, unto the Lord. Um, every detail of the believer's work, though they're done to benefit your fellow man. We, yeah, we're, we're, we do things to benefit people and, and the love that we have for them um, should always, even though our fellow man will benefit from it, even though we're doing something awesome for people we got to make sure we're doing it as unto the lord we got to make sure we're doing it as unto the lord you know i'm, I'm coming on and, and sharing and teaching and, and we're growing together but it i'm doing it as unto the lord even though you're getting blessed i'm doing it as unto the lord and and that's so awesome because it keeps your motives pure and clean you follow what i'm saying it's so very very important and so uh, it follows then, and this is a strong statement here, that much, much of so-called Christian activity cannot be acceptable unto God if it is done for personal preferment or because of a desire for recognition, okay? So the activity that we do, if we want it to be acceptable unto God, we got to examine why we're doing it. Are we involved in this activity for personal preferment or because of a desire that we have to want to be recognized? And you know what? Sadly, I don't know, there's a lot of people that 
they do good works be because they want the recognition. Because what happens is whatever you're doing, even if it's a bad motive and, and it's not being done unto the Lord, then the recognition you get, that's that's also your reward. Do it as unto the Lord, man. And let that motivation be enough for you. Now, of course, God's going to come and shower all kinds of favor and stuff in your life, you know, not because you work for it, but because that's just how he is, you know. But I, I'm pretty satisfied in my life right now with the reward that I get to do this unto the Lord. I hope you hear me. I, I get to do this. I get to share the gospel. I get to love what's not lovely. I get to uh I get to 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 see people grow, to share with people. I get to pastor. Uh I get to teach God's word. I get to encourage people. I get to counsel people. But, you know, before that was just uh just just a drudgery until I realized that I don't want to, you know, find myself saying, well, Lord, I'll do these things for you if you do this for me. Right now, it, it's enough for me to be able to do it. It's like, I don't, I, I remember doing this where my giving was concerned. I didn't see it as I got to give. I see it as I get to. I, I'm, 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 uh, what's the word I used last night? I, I'm privileged to be able to do this as unto the Lord. Are you kidding me? To be in the service of God to, oh, wow. That's, that's enough. When you have a personal relationship with God, you know, basically your attitude is, I expect nothing, but I appreciate everything. And that's, that's how I, I carry myself with, with people. It, it's a way to protect yourself from being hurt. I expect nothing, but if a blessing shows up, I appreciate it. And um, it, it's a pretty cool thing. Now, let me let me close with this. Um, I, I had this to come up yesterday. It was it's a pretty amazing thought. Have you ever asked yourself this question, Lord? or prayed this prayer, Lord, help me to locate the possibility of ego and pride in my life. These are, these are, these are questions that help you to continue to grow. And they're, they're, they're questions for, you know, mature people, but Lord show me, uh, if there's ego and pride in my life. And, you know, I asked the question, you know, is, is ego and pride sitting at the table? Now, most of you would probably say, oh, no, Brother Dollar. Ego and pride is not sitting at my table, praise the Lord. Well, I kind of I kind of think they are. I kind of think in all of our lives that ego and pride is sitting at the table. The key is to make sure you don't allow them to sit at the head of the table to start calling the shots. But if we all want to get honest with one another, maybe ego and pride is sitting at the table, but we just want to make sure that we don't let them sit at the head of the table. I think when you can continue to ask these kind of questions and continue to get to be honest with yourself and to be open and allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you, I think that's a part of growing. And so what happens is, is it helps you to get a watchful eye so you can watch ego, that you're not doing things and your ego is involved in it, or you're not doing things and your pride is involved in it. Pride is this, this, this thing of you have a, 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 a high, a higher estimation of yourself than you ought to have, but it also means, um, rather than humbling yourself before God, um, you know, you are the person that 
you know, make your own plans and you follow your own plans. You you submit to what you want to do and not submit to what God wants to do. Um, This is pretty awesome to be able to look in the mirror at times, folks, and ask yourself the question. Why do I do what I do? Why do I why do I do what I do? Um, and I think if you can be honest with yourself and ask that question, I think you'll, you'll, you'll find great growth in it. You can pull great growth out of, out of questions like that. And, um, it's a vulnerable moment in your life because certainly no one ever wants to admit that ego and pride sits at my table. Um, but I almost willing if I was a betting man that yeah they they show up at the table sometimes. But I want to tell you don't condemn yourself because pride and ego may be sitting at the table. Just make sure they don't sit at the head of the table. Make sure that love is sitting at the head of the table and that grace and 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 truth is sitting at the head of the table. Don't let your ego sit at the head of the table. Because what happens then, if your ego is violated, then we'll be able to tell because you're going to start responding in in such a ungodly way because of your hurt, your pain or disappointment or you didn't get what you thought you would get. But, you know, I did all of this and I didn't get what I thought I would get. You know, I've been working, you know, feeding the poor for 13 years and and y'all didn't even acknowledge me. OK, it's kind of like the rich young ruler, you know, saw his brother coming home. He was angry and he started talking to his dad about all the things he'd done. I did this and I did this and I ain't never did this. And so he was trying to earn his father's favor by the work that he had done. And what happened was that bitterness came in because he fell from grace. Anytime you find yourself uh, in your ego and in your pride and 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 now you're self-centered and you're you're doing things out of self-preservation, trying to preserve yourself, you have fallen from grace. And every time you fall from grace, you've allowed that root of bitterness to come in. And that root of bitterness came into that rich, un, not, not excuse me, not the rich one, you ruler, the prodigal son. I apologize. The prodigal son, that bitterness came into the heart of that prodigal son. And you didn't see it when it came in, but you sure saw it when his brother came back home. And, um, you know, he just didn't get angry, angry. He let that bitterness come in because he fell from grace. And then he allowed ego and pride to not only sit at the table, but get at the head of the table. And I'm telling you, if if we can be honest. And so why am I saying this? I think it's time for us as Christians to really work on being honest with ourselves. I often pray the prayer, Lord, help me not to deceive myself. I don't want to be walking in deception and I have this picture of me and it's not really true <laughs> you know what i'm saying and and like so many people we we have this amazing picture of ourselves that we're just awesome and all this and and it ain't it ain't it ain't like what you see in it and i'm like i don't want to be walking around you know it's like it's like you know if i'm walking around i got a booger on my mustache t- tell me i got a booger on my mustache so i can move it i'm not trying to be gross but i mean i want you to get that picture i'm walking around with a big old nasty booger thinking I'm sharp and and it's the same way with deception. I don't want to be walking around in deception. You know, Lord, help me. Tell me that um, that it's there. Show me. And I tell you, if you'll spend the time with him, uh, he will he he'll help you. He'll help keep you uh, in check and he'll he'll help uh, help you to see things uh, about yourself so that hopefully you can be more empathetic. Uh, when you see other people going through what they're going through. And so anyway, I, I pray that that this blesses you today. This was on my heart. Um, and I just wanted to share it with you. I absolutely love sharing something that would make a difference in your life or will help you to grow, even if it's just a little bit, just to help you to grow and to be more and more like Jesus Christ. And uh, I get a kick out of this because I never dreamed that I would be doing anything like this, dealing with any kind of technology. And yet um, 
I'm 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 so thrilled because I feel like we have a like a real we, we're we're like tied. It's like dude seeing you in public and you say, Hey, uh, I'm part of the Grace Gang. It's like a cousin. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like Pook and Nim. I mean, you're a part of the Nim now, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and um, through this technology, I get to do things and and connect with people that uh, from all over the world that I may never meet, but one day I may meet. One day I may have the opportunity to lay eyes and say, oh my God, that's a part of my fam, man. That's part of my family, my familia. That's part of them right there. And it's like, this is something. So yeah, that's why, you know, I really pray that all of you will be able to come to, to Grace Life Conference and feel that whole family unit, that whole family coming together. And we call Grace Life the reunion for a reason. It's it's a time that even we do stuff online, we can come together from all over the world. I mean, we sent so many letters out from around the world so people could get their visas and stuff. And um, I pray that this one will be 10 times better than the one last year and that it's a reunion that we can continue until Jesus comes back. Because when we all come together under one roof, it scares the devil so much. He ain't, I mean, are you serious? The devil is like freaking out. Like, are you kidding me? Um, and so it's more than just who's going to come. It's more than who the singers are going to be and who the speaker is going to be. It's the fact that we gather together on the one roof. That's power that can cover the globe. You understand? And and uh, it's an amazing thing. So uh, if you haven't registered for Grace Life uh, 2024, go ahead and get registered. It's July the 11th through the 13th. It's the reunion, man. And I, I am literally thinking about getting a gigantic grill and, and throwing some ribs on the uh on the grill for for our international guests who don't who don't know what a, a some good barbecue rib is all about boy and then from the south too what you say so uh we're gonna have we're gonna have a time july 11th through 13th 2024 go ahead and register now give us a heads up i don't i don't ever want to have a reunion and not have a chair for somebody and so it helps out a whole lot for you guys to do that uh well bloom has started this morning um i can't say nothing to you about that bloom is is on the way and uh I, i'm telling you man it it looked like it had bloomed in 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 the uh in the uh dome i thought i saw all them all them flowers down there i thought man this is like a funeral man they were blooming all over the place and i'm telling you uh it's gonna be an amazing 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 meeting i am um putting the final touches on my teaching tonight i'm gonna be talking about reverse dominance and uh, comparing uh liberal f uh feminism with biblical equality and um that's something that both men and women need to hear and um so it's going to be an amazing thing also uh new york i hope y'all ready i hope y'all ready man we coming in there like you know like to handle some business you understand the, the all hell already know what what, what we getting ready to do we're gonna handle some business april the 26th new york new york if you're in connecticut show up if you're if you're in dc take the train um man let's have a meeting in new york that they ain't they ain't never gonna forget and uh it's gonna be an amazing time so hey guys i love you so much i gotta get going have an amazing day today and uh will i be here tomorrow yeah we'll, we'll do this tomorrow and uh, tidy up some things, get ready for the weekend, and um, God bless you. Have an amazing day today. Love you so much.